So having a good career is one way that I measure success, but I realize that's not all. Welcome to Success Insider, a podcast for emerging leaders and anyone seeking motivation, inspiration, and business or career advancement. Brought to you by Success Magazine. Listen, learn, grow. How do you define success? Josh and Shelby share personal stories about what success means to them and why defining it is crucial to your life and career. Plus, we hear from the likes of Sarah Blakely, Joel Osteen, Lori Grenier, and more about their definitions of success. And now our hosts, Shelby Skirhawk and Josh Ellis. Shelby! <laughs> Your intros crack me up. Well, let's get past this one. Let's run through this podcast because I saw some leftover chips and salsa in the break room really? that have my name on them. We need to put this on pause. Fast forward. <laughs> 20 minutes. After chips and salsa. Josh and Shelby have returned to the studio. <laughs> now we can begin. Cheeks full. Shelby, <laughs> what is your definition of success? Josh, it's funny you ask me that because an early episode of the podcast, and I can't recall what episode number it was, it may have even been one of our practice runs, but you asked me that and my answer has bugged me ever since. So I said that a lot of my identity and self-worth is tied to my professional success. And you're doing great. Thank you. So having a good career is one way that I measure success, but I realize that's not all. So mm -hmm. my dad had a strong work ethic and it sometimes bordered on, on workaholic. And so he, he held career success really high on his list of, you know, kind of life goals, but he kind of worked himself to death really. And I saw that. So I know that career success is just one sided. Like I saw that he's often sacrificed his health, you know, for professional success. So I know that good health, is part of that definition. Uh, he often sacrificed family time uh, for his professional success. And so I include quality time with my family and as in my definition. I've kind of evolved in that aspect. So what's, what's your definition of success? I think when we talked about this last time, I explained it as sort of a constant growth and as many areas of my life, like you're talking about right now, uh, as much of a constant growth as I can achieve. And that's one of the themes that you'll see in the magazine and on success.com. None of us ever really feels like we're perfect and we never will be. Um, but, but we all have so much potential. And so I like to think about sort of an idealized version of myself. What's the next step I can take uh, at work to be more like the, you know, have more of the career that I want to have. What's the next step that I can take with you know, my productivity or how, what's the next step that I can take with my health and, you know, my relationship with my friends and, and so forth. I, I like what you're talking about. It's just um, about progress. As long as I feel like I'm moving forward, then I, I think I'm doing as much as I can ask of myself toward success. So let's hear from some of the successful entrepreneurs and uh, thought leaders that we've interviewed in the past year for our monthly interview series, Success Talks. Yes, let's. So I think something that makes Success Magazine unique is the CD that's bound into every issue. It's called Success Talks. There's one question we've asked every single person interviewed on the CD, and that's this. How do you define success? So first off, leading off our first CD of the year, January 2016, was the billionaire founder and CEO of Spanx Undergarments, Sarah Blakely courage to live your truest and biggest life. Okay, number two, pastor and author Joel Osteen. So in his February 2016 cover story, he talked about how he actually loathes the spotlight that comes with running his mega church, but he manages to push through anyway. I guess I would define it as fulfilling, you know, fulfilling your purpose. So for me, it's becoming, you know, who I was created to be and not, not, um, you know, it's not fame or fortune or wealth or anything like that for me. I, I, to me, it's that I do what deep down in my heart I felt like I was called to do. And again, it's, you know, I think a, an important part of that is not comparing myself to somebody else because, boy, I know ministers that are magnificent communicators and, I you know, I do my best. But my, my, my point would be is I would be competing with me to say, 
you know, when I get through with life, when I get through with every Sunday, did I do my best? Did I give it my all? Was I prepared? And, you know, that's a, that's a big part of it for me. And, and of course, tying that into, you know what, a, a good father, a good husband, uh, somebody that made the world a better place. It was a great interview with the jewelry designer, founder, and CEO, Kendra Scott, whose statement jewelry line and eponymous stores are popping up everywhere. You know, I think from very young, I always just thought that if I could do what I love, that I wouldn't work a day in my life. And, and I, you know, and that's, I think, so important is to make sure that whatever you're doing in your life, be passionate about it and do it with your whole heart. Um, you know, that's success for me. I mean, for me to be able to do what I love, to be present for my family and to be able to help others in the process That was everything I could have ever dreamt for, and that truly is success. All right, number four on this uh, top countdown of interviews is Shark Tank's Lori Grenier, who's got a very succinct way of thinking about success. To me, success is when you've achieved the goals that you've set for yourself, and you've impacted others in a positive manner, and of course, enjoyed it. Number five. Finally, the unlikely wisdom of chef Guy Fieri. In his June cover story, Guy really opened up to us about the criticism he's faced on his path to success. He has a poignant way of measuring success. At the end of the day, how do the efforts equal the results? And if the efforts aren't strong enough and the results aren't there, or if the results are too, the expectations are too high and the efforts aren't, you know, going to make the mark. I really think it's that balance. I think it's setting goals, accomplishing them, um, working hard, seeing the seeing it come to fruition. I, I think all of that. Of course, I mean, I can break it down into, you know, other facets of it, explaining it. You know, what do my parents think? What's my family think? Uh, What do my kids think? What do my friends, you know, what is the feedback that I've received? How do I personally feel? But I think that having a really good game plan and putting really strong effort without too much sacrifice, without losing yourself in it um, and uh, making sure that the goal that you're going for is obtainable and realistic and maybe a little unrealistic and a little unattainable, but that you you got to have that extra. But I think it's uh, having the efforts you know, making sure that there's a, a fine balance between the, the efforts and the results and that they uh, and that they match up. And at the end of the day, you know, what's your what's your personal scorecard? You know, how do you personally how do I personally feel that I did? And that's what the reflection time and the self-awareness time and the uh, availability to feedback um, have. You know, that's what generates the the next game, you know, the next challenge, the next opportunity. So. I wish I could button it up for you in a real clear, concise statement, but uh, this is a gigantic challenge. You know, this is this is like every TV show that they want to make a you know make a reality show about about you know this competition or that competition. We're in the greatest competition of, of life. That is life, and uh, there's all kinds of challenges and successes and treasures and pitfalls and all that that goes on. So, I mean, just how does it? What what's the scorecard at the end of the day? I got to say, it is one of my favorite parts of this job uh, that you and I get to both do. We we interview these folks, uh, the entrepreneurs, the thought leaders, the uh, big newsmakers and people who are doing amazing things in the world about what drives them. And as as we've seen today, their definition of success is always the final question. And it it really informs, uh, I think, the listener. It's, It's informed me along the way about um, really zeroing in on on what I want, and that question is so particular to every individual. Who was uh, who is who is your favorite interview you've done this year? Um, let's see. So I interviewed Mel, who is always a great interview. Mel Robbins. You know, she talked about the definition of success for her is just how much joy she feels, and I thought, yeah, that's a that's a great one. Who's the, who's the last person that you interviewed? Well, I don't want to give away too many things that have not hit the newsstand yet because we've got some exciting covers coming up. But um, let's see. The last 
cover person who I interviewed was Peter Diamandis, and that was an awesome interview. I mean, this guy uh, is just such a big thinker, and that's in our, our July issue. I encourage anybody to pick that one up if you can find it anywhere. And his definition of success is is really just to kind of push the world forward. I mean, he wants this is a guy who wants to live to 700 years of age. Like, and it, it really just informed me about just the importance of having huge goals. So he may not actually push anybody's lifespan to 700, but what if he gets it to 120? Right. You know, like, isn't that success? You aim for the stars and maybe you'll land among the moon or something <laughs> something like that. Isn't there a saying yeah. that goes in there somewhere? Yeah, yeah there, there's been some, some great interviews and I would encourage anybody to, if you love the podcast, then you will really love Success Talks. It's just an awesome component of every single issue that we do. And I think a lot of the initial success I guess we've had with the podcast has been from some very loyal Success Talks fans who, you know, say that they always pop the CD in first. And so now they're loving that it's in electronic format that they can, you know, it downloads automatically to their iPod and iPod, iPhone. <laughs> iTouch? Is I know. that still a thing? I know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm glad that you pointed that out because uh, if, folks are listening to the podcast then clearly they're in the uh the world of of the uh the mp3 or uh, i don't understand technology <laughs> this is why i work in print Shelby. Right, right. um you know they, they like they they prefer their files digital their yes. audio digital and so uh yeah it's it's the cd is bound in every issue if you prefer to uh just have the digital download then you can use it like a frisbee or you could coaster uh, uh coaster you could um, break it in half and use it to fight off vampires, whatever mm -hmm. you need to do. Yeah, all excellent uses. That's probably another segment right there. Uses for your magazine and CD. Write us in. Write in with uses <laughs> for, for your CD if you're more of a digital person. And actually, talk about the CD reminds me of the first time I ever picked up a copy of Success Magazine. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I was being asked to interview for my job here. And so I needed to I needed to grab a copy. I needed to grab a copy beforehand. And you know I was familiar with the magazine a lot when I was uh, younger, I think. But it had been a while since I'd seen a newer copy, and the CD was enclosed. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I guess yeah. I just I mean it brings up a lot of fun memories, and it dovetails with our discussion about the definition of success uh, that that we've been hearing today. It just brings up some fun memories about what I thought about the magazine and the brand after. Uh, so many years apart from it to, to pick it back up and, and see it again. Do you remember the first time you encountered the magazine or success.com? I definitely remember the first time I encountered our old office. <laughs> 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 we had this, um, basically this warehouse that was basically Frankensteined into some offices. And, and I thought I was in the wrong place because, it, you know, there's barbed wire on the front. It was just a bizarre looking building. There was a lot of stuff in there that other people wanted. A lot of good personal development Valuable. content they're just gonna break in and st <laughs> steal all those books yeah so there was definitely some confusion but then once i you know once i got in and i talked to the person that was interviewing me and, and i saw a lot of these iconic figures on the you know the covers of success you know posted on that wall then i was like okay this yes this is making sense and this kind of feels right like you got what, it what were your first impressions um well before i came to the office i had picked up an issue i do recall it was the august 2012 issue with the uh, tv producer mark burnett on the cover and uh, there's a great story about just what sort of motivated him to keep producing hit after hit after hit the other story that i remember still today was a breakdown of some bob dylan lyrics I loved Bob Dylan, still do. Uh, great lyricist. And uh, about, what story was that? I'm getting there, Sherber. Uh, <laughs> I'm it was very a, intrigued. It was a breakdown of like Bob Dylan lyrics mm -hmm. and the applicable lessons you could learn from them, and and maybe uh, some takeaways about how you might, since the times they are a change in, and right. the, you know things to bring those to the forefront of your mind to really think about their meaning and and uh, and, and act on them. And it really just got me to thinking about what the brand is and what it was trying to do uh, after so many years apart. Because when I had, you know, seen it years ago, it was it was probably more of a business-focused magazine, I would say. 
and uh, it had clearly grown toward personal development. And I was not as well versed in that sort of thing as I am now, certainly, but it, it really made me think and think about my own potential and, and other people's potential. Like I, I really started to realize, I think that the people who read this sort of thing, they're just doing more than, right. than their competitors or, or the, the guy in the next cubicle over, you know, they're, yeah. they're, they want it more yeah, and uh, they're probably more likely to achieve it too. Well, something that I always kind of liked about the magazine, especially early on, you know, we had received some criticism about our succession of celebrities on the cover. But something that I always thought was interesting, though, is that these weren't gossip rag type of stories. These were celebrities that had some kind of, you know, personal development element to them, some angle. And either they had used, you know, they're a big Jim Rohn fan, or, or maybe they were a devout, you know, goal setter or a list maker or, you know, some some little nugget that is rooted in personal development. And also the story became kind of an examination of what they're good at, like what they're best at. Like all of the people that we featured on the magazine, they're good at something and they're, you know, on the top of their game for that. So we would explore like exactly what it was, what did they do that's better than anybody else? And what can we learn from that? In so many cases, what they do and what you can do or what you're already doing, uh, there's very little or no divergence. I mean, the things that make these celebrities or, or billionaire entrepreneurs successful, they'll work in your life too. That uh, I think you probably hear a lot of that when you hear folks like Guy Fieri talking earlier and Kendra Scott. They're just regular people. Right. And that's one of my favorite things about the success brand, and it, it always has been, is um, just y you get a, a close idea of what these folks are like and how they're like you. you know? Right. And those tips and tricks and habits that uh, that you can borrow from from these successful folks. And there's so much stuff like that too on success.com. Maybe uh, you know you 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 guys run a lot of the profiles and things that are in the magazine too. But there's even more sort of daily skills and uh, habits and things like that. I I, I think that over on uh, the website you got a great product that really speaks to uh, it's sort of an embodiment of what what the brand is all about. Yeah, I think anybody that works in content knows that um, there's some gold and uh, the gold for us is, you know, tips or how to or most successful, what most successful people do. That's the- Well, that's what I want to read. I know, I know. If we could just make like 50 articles of what the most successful people fill in the blank, that we have ourselves a- Eat for lunch. Yes. Okay. I'll be on the lookout for that one. Do between- toenail clippings when they're petting their dog <laughs> outside <laughs> huh. is the day over yet just that's, some, that's yeah. just some just some ideas for you Shelby. i know i know i think feel you. free I'm, to I'm, run with it okay i will i'm gonna take those right now all right we have hit our logical conclusion here i think that about does it for this episode of success insider packed with wisdom from personalities that we featured this year like I said, we definitely want to hear from you on your definition of success. Head to Facebook and find our Success Insider podcast page to share your own personal definition right on our page wall. And while you're there, like us for articles and quotes and behind the scenes of our podcast, you can find our page at facebook.com slash success insider podcast, all one word. All right. So don't forget to enter the Success Insider contest. Today, July 26th, is the last day to enter. 10 lucky winners are going to win access to our online course, Jim Rohn Foundations for Success. So to enter, simply leave a review or rating for this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Take a snapshot of it and email it to successinsider at success.com. Keep working on your definition of success until we talk to you again. For now, I'm Shelby. And I am Josh, signing off from the most successful podcast in our little world ever. Final countdown. <laughs>